Hey, what's up Franklin West? I have another video for you today. It is about how to calculate the surface area of a rectangular prism. And you might also see that as lateral area, surface area and lateral area, they're the same thing. Math has so many different words that all mean the same thing. It can drive us a little crazy sometimes. So here's a rectangular prism. A prism, in this case, a rectangular prism is one that is, it's just a solid, three-dimensional form and so we've got all these different surfaces keep in mind that we're gonna ignore this opening here this is from a marble run set our actual building blocks now that our kids are much older are all packed away so I've got this as our model so we're gonna work with it so ignore the opening and assume that these um, sides right here are fully sealed like these other surfaces are. So before we get into the tutorial, I just wanna point out all the different sides here. So we have six faces, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? It's like a die, so it's a cube. It's just elongated as a rectangle here. So notice also that this face, the front, has the same dimensions as the back face. So these two faces are the same. That would be true of this face up top, should have the exact same dimensions as the face down below. So, so far they're paired, right? Two areas that are the same here, two areas that are the same here. And that's true of this side also. Remember, we're still ignoring this opening, assuming a totally flush surface, that these two are the same. Now it's possible that if this is a square, so the sides of the length is the same as the size of the width, then we have a square, which then means all these other four faces are identical in their area also. Um, but the way it is now, we can't assume that. Let's not assume. Maybe that's um, three by five. And so that means that because this is the three, this face and that face are the same to each other, but they're different than this face and that face because they have a dimension that is five. And so these longer ones will have the same length or width dimension down here, but they're gonna differ based on which edge of this front that they have um, associated with them. So there's a few different steps of calculating, but we're just gonna break it down. It's just gonna be adding, multiplying repeatedly. So let's give it a shot and we'll head into the video is our prepared rectangular prism. You can ignore all this stuff just for a moment and let's just focus on the three-dimensional form that is on the left. So just like in the introduction to this video, I had a wooden block. This is our kind of analogy or similar object um, that we are going to consider. It is a rectangular prism, and, and now we can ask ourselves, well, what is the total area of every surface of this prism? And I know I said it already just moments ago, but there are a total of six sides. So the front and the back is represented by this square. And as we um, go through in a moment, I'll color code to match if that helps you see. Um, these different surfaces separately and within its parts. Then we have this lateral side here, which I'm representing in the green. And it, you can't really see it because it's in the perspective away from us, but it's on the other side of that, um, that side. And then we've got the top, which we will color in yellow in its time. And that corresponds, its corresponding face is the bottom, which is another side we can't see. So when we take a look at this, it's very often actually in this perspective drawing that you're not going to be able to see all sides. And that's what can make this a little problematic sometimes, especially if you're really visual. And so how are you going to remember to calculate six sides when you only see one, two, three, four? And so, there are two things I could recommend. One is always remember that we're dealing with things that are in this cuboid family. So they're gonna have six faces, much like dice have six faces each. Um, the other thing is we really wanna work on our capacity to be able to imagine three-dimensional objects in our minds and be able to rotate and move them around in our imagination. And so that is a really great skill, well needed beyond math. Anytime you want to remodel parts of your home or whatever project you're going to work on now or later in life is going to really thrive. Your success in that project is going to thrive if you're able to create and rotate um, three-dimensional objects in your imagination. 
Okay, so let's say, and maybe, well, I'll write it. Um, shouldn't be too bad. We're going to start with these dimensions that this side has a length of four. I'm gonna do this without units to start. In the next video, I'll add units, and then there'll be a third that brings this into a bridge to algebra. So if you're really hungry for a challenge, probably the next two, the, the second and third video will be what you are looking for. This is really a refresher video on how to do this and what it means to calculate surface area of rectangular prisms. So. Keep watching if that fits what you're looking for, and, and otherwise you can click on to the next video. So we'll say that this dimension has four units, this dimension has three, and so that's this side of the face. So these two are not equal to each other. Keep in mind though that if this is three, based on the quadrilateral shape, this is three. And if that is a length of four, then this two is a length of four. And that'll help us as we go to build our dimensions all around this figure. And let's say that this long dimension here is 10 units. Okay, and so that's because this is 10, then that is also 10. So you can see how if we just assign this knowledge that we have from these three labels and we move that information throughout the whole figure, we can actually identify the length of every edge in this three-dimensional shape. Okay, so this right here is the four by three face and we're calculating area and area means that we are going to do um, length times the width and so we are going to multiply four and three. Now before we get there we should say, whoops, I need to get into the marker. We should say that this face is represented here. So I'm pulling out each face separate from its total form. And that way you might be able to visualize the parts that make up the whole. Um, and I believe I said this side, they're gonna overlap a little bit. See how this would cover? You wouldn't really see the total face back there. And it's got a complementary face or corresponding face on the other side that we just cannot see. And then the top and the bottom are represented here. I won't overcolor. Oh, yeah, I guess you can see the layers. That's great. Okay, so the top and the bottom are represented by this face here. So if we're looking at this face, the surface, and it came from these dimensions, then we can say that is a four by three. And there's how many of those? Well, there's two of them, right? So there are two of these faces. And let's go down to the side here, this this portion, this rectangle that's hiding within the prism, so this lateral surface. This long side is a 10 for sure. But how do you know the length of this edge? Well, remember, if this one is four and they're directly across from each other, then that is a four also. So you can see that this is a four by 10. And of course, there are two of these faces as well. We just can't see the second one. Now the yellow represents the top and the bottom. We can't see the bottom. We know that if this is 10, then that is 10. And these two faces, the yellow and the green, share this edge. And so that is also a length of 10, 10 units. And this edge here, if we want to find out how long it is, it's going to correspond to how long this side opposite is from this face. So that is a three. So therefore, that's a three. So right away, you can tell that we have three unique areas. This is a four by three. That's a four by 10. And that's a three by 10. And so, and there are two of these faces also. Excellent. So it's important to remember the doubling aspect. So in the introduction part of this video, I talked about how we're just going to add and multiply, add and multiply a bit kind of repetitively um, to do this work. And this is one of those moments where that's what I'm talking about, that this is a four by 10, but there's two of those. And so if I've got this twice, then I need to double that area. And so let's see if we can put in some of that information. And I think I will write it in. So if I'm calculating the area of this face, this is a four by three. And I said there were two of them. 
So we're going to double it. You might not have written your math like this, but this um, is a good way to demonstrate that thinking because it shows that you recognize four times three as the area and that there are two faces. So we're going to double it. And anytime we have a, t a term outside a parenthesis grouping um, or outside um, a whole expanded quantity, I guess I'd say, right? This is really one number, but right now I'm writing it as two separate numbers. I can't just put a two and have two times the four. What if that was add or subtract in there? Um, that would not necessarily work out in great math. In this case, two times four, then times three is the same thing as four times three, then times two. So even if you didn't have your parentheses here, you're going to be okay because it doesn't matter what order we do our multiplications in, we will get the same product. And so if you're taking a look at this, you know that you're going to have a two times a 12. If, if math um, facts trip you up, don't sweat it. Use your resources. Get really skilled at having a printed out times table and reference that. There's an incredible amount of patterns in a times table, and it gives you way more information than just what times what equals what. Um, so as you get more fluid in there, it becomes a wealth of information. Um, if you don't have a times table, of course, use your calculator. But if um, those are not your challenges, then I challenge you to do mental math as much as as possible and then get to the point where it can be how quickly and accurately can you answer some of these questions. Um, that can be an added layer of challenge too. And so 2 times 12 is 24. So as you can see it wouldn't matter if I did 2 times 3 I'd get 6. 6 times 4 is 24. So the add order does not matter. All right. So let's see if we can do this even faster now. So we've got the rhythm. In order to find the area it's length times width. So that's 4 times 10. And I've got how many faces? You guessed it. There are two faces that match these dimensions, this side in green and then the side we cannot see over here. And that is 2 times 40, which, get, which gets us 80. So, and keep in mind, I did not put units in this. That'll be for the next video because we can um, do a challenge with units um, and then a challenge with algebra later. But keep in mind that the best way to do area, length, and width work and volume work is you must have units. Okay. So then this one, we've got two of those faces. Each face is a three by 10. And notice I'm using the word by, three by 10. Um, just like the word of in math means multiplying, so does by. So 3 by 10, um, that will tell us to multiply. So when you go to the hardware store and get your 2 by 2 or 8 by 8 by 2, um, that's what we're talking about. They're calculating areas and volumes with those dimensions. So now 3 times 10 is 30, and 2 times 30 gets us 60. Okay. We did a bunch of work here, right? A series of multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. And I said there'd be adding, but we haven't done any adding yet. And that's because if we want to be able to calculate the total, the sum, right? S-U-M, the sum, then we need to add all those numbers together. Okay, we're looking for the total area it would cost, or sorry, require to cover this, whether it's with paint or wrapping paper, um, or just to, in terms of building and scaling. And so now, let me get back into the right color. We need to take the area of these two faces, the front and back faces, that's 24. And we need to add it because sum and total is all about adding to these two faces that are in green and their total area was 80. And we need to add that to the last grouping of faces, the these two in yellow, the top and bottom, and their total was 60. So here we had one, two, three, four, five, six faces all um, represented here. So even though I only have three numbers, each number is representing two faces. And so now we just need to add them all up. And again, adding you can do in any order. So I like the 20, or sorry, the 80 and the 60 because they're both power, uh, value uh, multiples of 10. And so 80 plus 60 is 140 because I know that 8 plus 6 is 14. I'm just going to tack a zero onto there. And so then I have 140 plus 24, and that'll get me 164. So there's probably 
a bunch of different ways you could count your way here. So again, practice your mental math skills in order to solve your total. Okay, so this right here, this final value is our final answer. So the total surface area of this rectangular prism according to the dimensions that are four by three by 10 is 164. So I hope that video was helpful in helping you understand that content. If you are interested in knowing more about this or another topic, do not hesitate to reach out to me. You can always email. If you have YouTube permissions from your parents, you can comment below and tell me what topics you would like to have added into my video list to help you with your continued math learning. And don't forget, if there is science stuff that you need some help with, I can work on providing materials for that also. So, so I hope it was helpful. Good luck in all that you do. You're all wonderful people. And